So, part two. I've been talking about these two basic Quranic virtues, these pillars of the spiritual life. Fikr, meditation, contemplation, reflection, confronted with uh, the signs of God in nature. And dhikr, which is remembrance, reminding ourselves of our divine source and the divine end of our earthly lives. Now, in the Quranic verse I cited a few minutes ago, um, we are told of those who remember God, dhikr, whether they be standing, sitting, or on their sides, and who meditate on the creation of the heavens and the earth. So these two principles, thicker and dhikr, are actually just juxtaposed in this verse. Now the basic Muslim technique of remembering of dhikr is of course the five daily prayers. Um, in the Quran, God tells Moses, وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ dhikri," and establish the salat, the prayer, for my remembrance, for my dhikr. And Islam has traditionally seen the formal prayer as a form of worship for beginners, as a form of purification for spiritual wayfarers, people who are a bit more advanced, and a form of union in some unimaginable, inexpressible way for the saints. And the hagiographies are full of stories that indicate the extraordinary state of absorption which the saints achieve when they're in the state of prostration to God. One early saint of Basra, for instance, uh, is said to have had a gangrene in his foot and he refused to allow it to be amputated. So his family told the surgeon to amputate it while he was in prostration. And the surgeon did this. And when the man finished his prayer, he saw that his foot was gone. So complete was his, his absorption in, in, in his prayer and in his uh, communion with God. And through the, the salat and the other five pillars, the Muslim life is punctuated by events of dhikr, of remembering. Minimum of five prayers a day, one Friday prayer a week, month of Ramadan, once a year, um, etc. And the Hajj, of course, once in a lifetime, minimum. And pivotal to this system is, of course, the holy house of Abraham in Mecca itself, which um, functions both as a, a symbol and itself as a reminder of the divine throne, some of the literature. It's a, a metaphor for the divine throne around which um, the angels turn in adoration like moths circling a flame. So the link of human worship to the cosmos is provided in this way um, by the movements of the sun. You'll recall that I mentioned in my lecture on Islam this fact that um, Islam is, the practices of Islam are intimately related to the unfolding of, of, the, of the natural order and particularly the, the progression of the sun. Um, the moon obviously plays its part as well because it uh, determines the Muslim calendar and hence uh, presides over the timing of Ramadan, the annual zakat and of course the hajj. So you could say that because of Islam's unashamed binding of religious practice to the physical world, the five prayers, as it were, follow the passage of our planet through the void. And as the rays of the setting sun touch each corner of the, the planet, the Muslims who live there touch their heads to the earth in humility and in reverence. In fact, if it were possible to observe the earth um, from afar through a kind of spiritual telescope, you might see a constant unceasing progression of five bands of lights, as it were, as people pray, constantly moving around the earth. Innumerable little points of, of luminous activity that together make up great bands of, of the recollection and celebration of God traveling around the planet forever. So the first point when you talk about dhikr is that its foundation and the foundational practice is these five daily prayers. They are, as it were, the, the framework on which the rest of the Muslim devotional life is hung.